Oh, hello. I'm Mark Pikert, editor-in-chief of The Gay Goods. My first job out of college was working on gay porn, a job from which I was fired. The only job from which I was fired. Fifteen years later, I'm back, and I'm thriving, and I couldn't be more excited to work on The Gay Goods and this interview series, The Gay Goodies, featuring first guest, so excited, no idea, Ricky Larkin. I, what is there to say about Ricky Larkin? Words fail me. So rather than me try to describe Ricky Larkin to you, let's just bring him on so you can see what I mean. Thank you for the introduction. I mean, I, when you showed up shirtless, I was like, oh, and I didn't even have to ask. That is the mark of a star. I, 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 as I was saying earlier, I hardly wear clothing, so it's, um, it's, it's, I mean, it caught me in my normal, my normal state. <laughs> this is my normal state too. Um, I'm not wearing pants, but I am wearing a cardigan. I think that's the, I think that's the way I did, did the, uh, the online awards, just like tried to look great up top, but nothing on the bottom. It's like the high, the high school, the high school yearbook picture tucks up top and, uh, and, and basketball shorts. <laughs> well, to be fair, that's how many men work out of the gym too. They just want to look great here and they don't, they skip leg day. Oh yeah. That's why there's a lack of like butts and quads and, and, in a lot of men. It's just a grasshopper carrying an action figure on top. But I've also seen the opposite where guys just like solely work out legs just so they can have like big legs and butts and, uh, and that looks looks all right. It's all about balance. How are these guys yeah. walking around weighted too heavily on either end? I don't know. I'm, I, I've, um, I've, always, I've always worked on proportions. When I first started bodybuilding, um, I don't know. It was just, it was all about like, uh, I want to have even legs, even upper body. And I never liked working out legs. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie until I had strong legs. And then it became fun. <laughs> so it took time, but, but now I love it. So there's so much that I want to talk to you about, but the biggest is you, it's in some ways you've had almost two careers in gay porn, because when you started out in, when did you start out? It was 10 years ago, 11 years ago. So 2009, I think, um, I got sent a picture yeah, from 2009 so. the other day. And you were like a very swimmer build, so sweet looking. And now you are wet dream daddy. Um, yeah, I took a, it took a, it took a long time to go to, to get from where I was to where I am. But, um, uh, to be honest, when I first came into the industry, I I I I I I wanted to be like the guys on Raging Stallion, and um, I was small, I was skinny, and I said, you know, like uh, I remember I met the guy that his name is Spencer Reed, and he was so like big and jacked and hairy. I said, man, I want to be like these guys. So I just worked and worked and worked, and um, yeah, eventually I eventually I I I got what I wanted. I I was working with Raging Stallion, and that was um, you know, that's what I wanted when I came in the industry. So yeah. I just worked on my body till I got there. I went from like a hundred and I think like 140 pounds in those first videos I did to about my biggest was like 240. I think I did a men.com shoot at like 240. What? That is a, like as someone who started working out seriously in 2012 and gained 20 pounds. I started at 140. I'm like 161 right now. How do you do that? Like, how do you? Are you just that disciplined or was this something that grew with the working out? Um, I had a lot of good people around me that, that were into the, into the, into working out. I worked out with, um, uh, Florida strongest man, the guy that won Florida strongest man two years in a row. I worked out with some, some really awesome guys when I worked in California. Um, but it eventually just becomes your life. You eventually just like get to the point where it's like, um, it's no longer like, Oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. Like I'm, I'm, I eat. I eat, um, what I want to eat now has changed. Like I want to eat like the, the, the things that are going to keep me right. And, um, but there was a while there where it was all just about getting huge. And, um, I, did, I, I feel like, uh, you know, your body doesn't know the difference between fat and muscle. So I got too big and it was not, uh, I think it looked great, but it was not healthy for me, like walking and especially living in Florida, I'm just sweating constantly. I'm just, it wasn't good, but, um, <laughs> But it takes a lot, you know. It takes a lot of a, a lot of eating till you're sick, and um, um, yeah. I mean, I think um, I think hormones play a huge role in it. I think uh, you know your 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 drive plays a huge role in it. 
But I mean, it's the thing. If you want something bad enough, you're going to do whatever to get it. And that's what I did. So It's true. I guess I don't want anything that badly. And because, as I said earlier, sometimes you just want to sit and watch the Golden Girls and yeah. take it home. Everyone loves the idea of something, but when it comes to like what it takes to put it in, they're like, "Yeah, it's not worth it for me." But um, but it was worth it for me. I yeah. like what I, I what, like where I am now. What effect did it have on your career? Did you notice anything right away? One hundred percent. Um, I think when I first started, it was so long ago. I think I I um, when I first started, I didn't look at it as like I can make a career off of this. It was just like extra money here and there, um, <laughs> little. But um. Yeah, when I first started um, adding size, I remember is when like I met uh, Shishi, and the day I met Shishi, Shishi like um, Shishi canceled a couple people from her shoot so that so that uh, she could put me in those slots because I oh, thought wow. you know I, I looked better, I was more confident, and um, I think that's a big part of it is the confidence too. Is a lot you know like uh, if you if 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 you're putting in the work, you're gonna feel good about yourself. And I was putting the work on the Shishi. I shot a lot after that um and then i took a break because i just wasn't where i wanted to be like uh mentally physically um and i mean i i when i came back it was it was uh moving to las vegas and saying like i'm gonna do this full time now and i'm gonna really uh you know give all my efforts to it um because i was where i wanted to be physically and i was I, I i had known enough and learned enough throughout years of doing it like how i can um how i can learn and uh that's what i did so so when you decided you wanted to go full-time and this is what you were going to do how did you what was the first call that you made um actually i got a call from 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 my friend who is howard and oh. In in Fort Lauderdale, my friend Howard um, called me and he says, "Hey man, I got I got these four scenes. Uh, they're for Men.com. Da 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 da. And this is before I had never done bareback porn. There was always like a stigma to bareback porn uh, when I when I was doing it. Uh, when I was doing porn in the past, it was only condom porn. And he says, "Man, they want to give you this much, and it was a lot of money. And I'm thinking like, okay, um, <laughs> you know, what's the catch? And he's like, the catch is it's uh it's it's bareback. They want you to shoot um bareback and so I shot the first men.com bareback scene with um what is his name? Jake. Um fuck man. I'm so bad at names. You, anyways, if I had a picture was, of his uh, ass, you would recognize it. Probably, but uh, probably not. But, <laughs> but um <laughs> but I did uh I did I did he um so I came out um th those four shoots were in LA and I shot with Sean Duran. Um, who I've known for a long time. That was a fun shoot. I shot with that boy, and I did two other shoots for for them. And um, I moved to Vegas right after those shoots. I literally went right from LA to Vegas, never went back to Florida just to visit. And um, yeah, I've been here ever since. And uh, I love Las Vegas. Las Vegas is so great. LA is right there. Um, Falcon Studios is right here in Las Vegas. So when I first came, I started shooting for for like Raging Stallion and. Um, it's it's fun. So why did you when you said that you took a break? What prompted you taking a break for a while? Um, there's so much um bullshit and and drama <laughs> and 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 just so much <laughs> shit that you just don't want to deal with after a while. And it's like, uh, you know, why why deal with it? Um, you know, especially back then, there was not things like OnlyFans and uh, and just for fans and all these platforms for you to make that extra money. So it was like the money's not really worth worth the bullshit. It's uh you know um but coming back i knew like uh you know i had a game plan and um i followed it and the money's worth it now so i mean my first job out of college was was at, in gay porn i was a casting director and a production manager for uh michael lucas okay <laughs> did you work with mr pam no, I was right before Mr. Pam. Oh no! So I was still I was still in touch with a lot of people in the office when Mr. Pam showed up, and I remember everyone being so crazy about her and talking about how much fun it was to shoot with her. And I was like, well, of course I got my ass fired right before this yeah. awesome person came along. But uh, I've never worked with Michael I, I, before. Uh, he's lovely, and he's lovely when he's lovely. Yeah, as so I'm many people told. are. But I, I just remember, I, I remember sitting in a meeting and saying out loud, 
why are we fucking wasting our time? No one's ever going to want to watch porn on their phones. Oh God. Oh, is that, is um, that like, just in case you just in case you ever doubt that people are that stupid when you see them in film or TV? Yes, sometimes people are that stupid. But yeah, it was 2005, which is wild to think in 2005. No, there was no OnlyFans. There was no social media in the way that we use it now. There was no tube sites, and bareback porn was so taboo. It was so, so taboo. It was not oh, anything it was. that you admitted that you watched. It was not anything that anyone would do. And now it's it's the default now. That, that's false because I remember when I was in, I went to this place called Revolver in West Hollywood one time. They were they were doing interviews with, with me and three other guys and they asked me what I thought about bareback porn. And this was a long time ago. So I'm like, yeah, I would never do it, da, 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 da. Um, and then I don't know the other three guys on stage. I'll do bareback. I'm like, holy fuck. Like, I got off stage. Let me get the fuck out of here. <laughs> hey, they felt so tried. I think they unfollowed me on Twitter and stuff. It just, I mean, how am I supposed to know? I was asked a question. I just always give my honest answer. Um, so, yeah. But no, it was. It was a very, very, like, taboo. Like, uh, and I remember when, when Howard first said, oh, it's, it's bareback. I was like, yeah, fuck no. Da, 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 da. He's like, come on. Just, uh, and he, he told me exactly how it would go. I said, okay, cool. And then when I when I first came to um to to Raging Stallion is when they when they also switched um over to bareback they switched completely over to bareback and they got good testing um testing procedures and stuff in in place so it is it is fine. I think that the industry is a lot safer now than it was um um ten years ago when when it was condoms and everything. So I mean, I do too, and I wonder too. I mean, but also models have so much more agency now than they did. 10 years ago, five years ago, because uh, you were not as dependent on the studios because you have only fans and just for fans and ways to connect direct fans. And that is the thing is uh, with, I think Twitter made everything possible. Twitter made everything possible. It was able, it was, the, the, it was for us to take the next step to where we can even get our own studio gigs and book our own stuff, um, build relationships with directors, build relationships with studios. Um, and, and, um, I just remember it was, it was 2000, 2019 when, uh, I got, I, I got, I got, um, I got told about OnlyFans and I couldn't believe it because it, it's, it's made such a difference in, in, in the game. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's like, you just, I, I, this entire year, 2000 or this year, 2020, the only scenes that I took, uh, in the beginning of, of, of the year, I, I did a, a couple of buy scenes out in LA and then I did I think four scenes for Shishi and then the shutdown happened and I've only been working with Mr. Pam since and uh I've done s such a small amount of studio work um and I've I made so much more than I did the year before when all I did was <laughs> shoot studio work and it was so exhausting and going to LA and, and shooting, uh, you know, going and coming back the same day. It's a 21 hour trip. You go there, Ooh. you shoot, you drive back same day, you're up, you get out of the, out of the car. And it's just like, that wasn't worth what I just got paid. <sighs> like, um, so yeah, it's so easy now just to, just to, you know, if, if I, you know, if I don't like a pairing or if I don't like the, the, you know, what's happening, it's so easy just to say like, no, I'm not interested. Um, and and I think that that it only fans is something that I think a lot more people need to get on. As many people that are on it, they need to get on it and take it seriously because um, it's the key to financial freedom. As a as um and 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 being able to take all the studio work that we've done and actually use that as um to promote ourselves rather than using you know rather than yeah. doing all the promotion for the studio, which is free promotion to them. They don't even have to put in. They don't even have to um. Uh, uh, budget in uh, uh, advertising anymore because we're doing all the free advertising for them. Um, but what we should be doing is, is, yeah, advertising for them, but using that to pull pull it to ourselves. And um, I know a lot of a lot of a lot of guys that I'm you know I'm trying to push. Hey, get more on the OnlyFans thing because uh, when the studio shit runs out, you're gonna still have that to rely on. And um, you know, like I say, it gives you the ability to dictate everything. Um, I want to do this. I don't want to do this. You know. So what do you, what is the Ricky Larkin OnlyFans special? What do you offer subscribers? Um, 
Well, my subscription is ten dollars. However, like I'm constantly running specials for three dollars, five dollars. So I send out scenes a couple times a, a couple times a week, and I don't charge a lot of money. I charge maybe five dollars or seven fifty for the scenes. Um, I know a lot of guys are charging fifty bucks, twenty bucks a scene. It's like um, it's hard to it, you know like uh, the people. My goal is just to have longevity in it and to have uh, you know. Um, people that are just there constantly wanting to take part. I also talk to all my fans in the DM if they want to talk about anything. Um, I also offer custom videos. Uh, they start at $200, but uh, the production value is there. I, everything I do, I do really good. I, I don't get any complaints. Um, but uh, the what thing the, that I, what is the What's the weirdest custom video you've gotten asked for? Uh, people uh, people like to ask me to do um, some some stuff and I'm just not com and I'm not saying it's weird it's the stuff I'm not comfortable doing um, yeah. like uh, like I think like um like 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 scat videos I, I'm just not comfortable doing it I don't want to I don't I've, it's, I don't judge anybody just not my thing I'm not I'm not into doing that and I'm not into like put it I'm not gonna put my phone in the toilet There's but that comes up do. so much on OnlyFans. yeah I hear that I from think, a lot of models. And I think like um, um, the it's funny because the boy just won the Gavion Stars thing. He does a lot of like uh, he does a lot of like fart videos, and I mean I'll, I'll be doing showing showing my hole when it happens sometimes. But like I I don't know I'm I'm not really if they want like a whole like fart video. Like I don't know how to I can't just fart on command. Like I, I don't know how that <laughs> how how I would do that. But like um, you didn't learn that in Florida. It was the one <laughs> thing you were left behind in Florida. God. <laughs> It's funny because Florida is the, the worst place ever. I say it. It's like I, I, I'm from Florida. I'm so from Florida. It's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, is, is your OnlyFans more for your gay fans or more for your straight fans? It's, or it's for my fans. Um, I think that I think that the majority of of, of the people on there want to see guy guy stuff. Even the women who subscribe to my page want to see guy guy stuff. But the 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 bulk of what I post, the bulk of what I'll put on there is guy guy stuff. Um, I I've had a lot of success shooting with with everyone though. Um, people will will you know uh, love my my guy girl videos. They will love my uh, my my videos with trans girls. Uh, I had a trans boy on there, Luke Hudson, and we did quite a, quite a few things together. But um, my best video, the best thing I've done, and um, I really think it's the hottest video I ever shot. I did something with uh, Devin Franco. And um, that was in that was like an insane scene. Um, uh, Mr. Pam shot it. We did it at my in my bedroom in Las Vegas. It was really really hot, and uh, that's done really well for me. Um, but like I I I was really into Devin Franco. We met a couple of years ago at the Grabbies. Um, we've been trying to get paired together. We were exclusive for the same company, trying to get paired together, and it, it never worked out. So um, after I left, uh, we made it happen, and it was hot. Um, was there ever yeah. any worry? Did you ever have a worry about leaving an exclusive deal with a studio and going out on your own? Absolutely not. Um, I think that <laughs> this is the whole thing. This whole thing. Uh, we're so like, we're so like, I love it. It's an ex exclusive. The thing about the exclusive thing is this, uh, it, it's an opportunity for, to get a lot of promotion, a lot of exposure. Um, the money you make is not even as good as if you were on your own. Because here's the thing, I could shoot two two scenes for for the same studio, and when I was under contract with them, they still allowed me to do uh, a, a few buy and trans scenes a month, which is where the bulk of my money was coming from. Um, but it was all about exposure, and um, to be I, I to be honest, I walked away from that contract because um, I just wasn't I, I I wasn't happy with shooting with the same um, aesthetic of of person every time and. And I, you know, I wanted to work with a variety of people and um, I wasn't given that opportunity there. And also I just didn't like the, you know, the, the shooting the same, um, I don't know, the same shit every month. It felt like we were shooting the same, you know, um, <laughs> you know, the brands like to stick to what they like to do. And I'm, I'm a very versatile person. I, I like to, I like to, oh shit, probably my, um, my Amazon package. But um, I like to uh, I like to shoot a variety of things with a variety of people, and and you know I don't think I was given that opportunity. And like I said, I felt like I could make more money elsewhere. There's uh, a million studios out there. Why only work for one? Um, yep. And uh, 
And and like I said, as soon as I got off contract there, it allowed me, I went and did a couple of sh shoots for men.com right away. The day my contract ended, I was in San Diego <laughs> shooting for men.com. I did two <laughs> scenes there. Um, and then, like I said, after that, I had four scenes with Shishi right around uh, uh, AVN time um, with, with Icon Mail and Noir Mail. And um, I got paid the same for all of those uh, that I did while I was under contract. So, um, you know, it was more money in one month than I made in two with uh, under contract. So the contract is is great if you're worried about not being able to get work. I'm not worried about not being able to get work. No, you have you have Mr. Pam to coordinate everything and make everything look beautiful. Oh yeah, she is good, very good. She's got Hall of Fame at uh, the gig ends this year. We had a little party at the uh, yeah, we had a little party at the Bellagio. It was very fun. Oh, one of the few times that you left your home during the pandemic. Well, we it was a, we we got a room uh, a big we got a penthouse there and um we I think we had about eight or ten people there we got our own like red carpet photographer it was all like <laughs> all people we know so it was cool that's awesome uh, you were talking about Twitter changing the game a little bit and you I love your Twitter because it's sexy but also you were such a smart ass in the best possible way yeah I I feel like you ever in trouble but. I, you, I, I, I was going to say, like, how do you how do you thread that needle of being you and also being so fucking upfront about who's pissing you off in the industry? Um, this is the thing is 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 uh, I I I am me, and I like I said, that's why I said the people that I, that I gear my only fans towards are my fans. Um, people that are gonna love me are gonna love me, and people that are gonna hate you are gonna hate you. You're the bad guy in somebody's story, no matter what. Um. No mm -hmm. matter what you say, people are going to take it and turn it into what they want it to be. So I just am, I'm me. Um, trust me, a lot of times I do, I, I, I'm on there and I just want to, I want to bite, I want to say something, but I, I, a lot of times don't because uh, in all reality, Twitter is there for promotion. It's there for me to promote my, my, the, what I'm selling and what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, of course I, 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 I comment on some things here and there, but, uh, the the thing is this is I feel like I've I've been here long enough for people to know that like that's just who I am and I don't you know there are a lot of people that that take offense to things I say and it's like it's Twitter can you chill out like um grown ups getting upset about things on Twitter and uh, um you know at the end of the day we we all have the right to be ourselves and and if you don't like it you don't have to like me I you know I got plenty of people that do it doesn't bother me. Um, for every person that has something foul to say, I've got quite a few that like me, and um, you know the amount of subscribers I have on on my platforms tells me that. So, yeah, it's always so wild to me when somebody actually engages in a huge prolonged battle on Twitter, and I'm like, "You're just yelling at each other. Why are you well, yelling at each other?" Well, let me tell you something. A lot of the times, the people that have the biggest voices on Twitter are the quietest people in person, and um, <laughs> and and, that's, and I'm and I'm and I'm saying that for real because I've been around all the people that have come for me on Twitter, and they're usually the quiet guy in the corner at these events. And um, I've been in, you know, I've been in movies with a lot of these people, and um, you know, we've. <laughs> you're the quiet. The quietest people are the loudest ones on Twitter. So, um, a lot of times, uh, you know, if you see me engaging with someone, it's a lot of times because like. I, I just I don't understand the the you know like um I just don't understand the whole the whole need to like uh involve yourself in other people's shit or be try to be like a, a savior or a tough guy online when it's like brother we you know a lot of times these people have my number and they'd rather just try to get clout and say something to me you know um I'm like Conor McGregor they know I'm gonna respond so they <laughs> they, they come for the they come for it um so yeah you are you are the <laughs> conor mcgregor in many ways of gay porn it's true that's if, your full quote <laughs> if if, uh, if if they come for me they're they're known for it but if i go back at them i'm wrong for it i don't understand it but hey it is what it is you know it's just because you look so mean in the best <laughs> way possible <laughs> it's just like i have to preface everything with my tone of voice is just cunty i don't mean it that way <laughs> that's just my voice. So when I was doing, because I, uh, I, I I was doing sales at uh at, at LA Fitness, and they're like, brother, you got to put your seat down some because when you're over people and you're, blah, 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 
<laughs> what I had to tell him, I didn't, man, I got the best, I got the best, uh, I got the best sales in the company. I don't, I, 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 I'm going to do it my way, but you're intimidating. I don't mean to be, this is, you know, <laughs> um, that sounds like a them problem. Exactly. I'm not going to, they need to work out, build up their agree. confidence. Well, that's the thing is, uh, uh, I was looking at it the other day. I got come for on Twitter because I had said something. There was a straight performer talking about, should I do scenes with, uh, with, with, with boys and trans. And, um, I just said, Hey, you're going to get in a little better shape. If you, uh, if you want to work on this side, um, <laughs> DM me if you want a meal plan or a, or, or a workout program. And some people came for me because, uh, you're body shaming and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, I'm being 100% real. Like, uh, I didn't get work when I didn't look um, when I didn't look great. I didn't even I worked in the industry for ten years before I even got a nomination. And last year I had eleven uh, gay VN nominations and and eight Grabbies nominations, and I won an award at each. And it's like uh, you have to really work on yourself. You can't sit on the fucking couch and eat fruit roll ups and play video games and um, and just expect it all to happen for you. Like it really takes hard work. And I'm not body shaming, but it's also at the same time like. Um, the the if you want something uh go get it don't just tell everybody they should ex they should accept you or they should you know find you attractive when it's like um you know work on you work on everything you can to make yourself the best the best you and for me that's exercise and it helps me mentally physically um and 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 to top it off i just think the self discipline it takes to actually like uh you know to actually uh, work out and 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 I think the self discipline de directly uh, translates into everything in every aspect of life. If your if your discipline's there, you're going to be a better um, you know you're going to be a better uh, professional. You're going to be a better everything. So yeah. Um, all right, we have to wrap up because I've eaten up a lot of your morning already. Uh, final two questions. Uh, one for me, one for you. The one for you is who did you used to jerk off to when you were growing up? Gosh. Oh my gosh. Or I'm sorry to presume, did you did you masturbate as a teen? Yeah. Um I am just trying to think. I don't think I I don't think I had like a favorite person. I think I would just go on porn up and if I saw like something hot I would click on it. Um <laughs> Oh man! And I said you grew up with Pornhub, by the way. Some of us had to keep a VHS in the VCR and record any shirtless guy who popped up on TV for a compilation for later. Yeah, well, the thing when when it was DVDs, um, I remember the the first DVD that I found and I jerked off to it a lot. I remember I was like sixteen and I went into an adult video warehouse in Florida and I got some DVD and I remember it was a. Uh, it was a it was a straight straight DVD, but the guy in it was what's his name? Um, he's really fucked up looking now. Um, <laughs> blonde hair, really fucked up looking guy, and he fucked all the girls in the shower. So I always thought like shower sex would be so great. Now I realize shower sex is not great. Anything with water is not that great. Um, mm -hmm. Evan Stone was his name, and he he would, um, he's, but he's so I've seen him lately. He's not 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 looking so good. But um, he was it was a straight DVD. But I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't really um have a favorite person I jerked off to. Um, I was always into like uh, watching oral, and now I'm not. But um, I used to like to huh. watch oral because I could never like um. I don't know. I wasn't very sexually active when I was younger, so like I I was fascinated by by that that <laughs> visual of like getting getting it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I used to jerk off to Jean Claude Van Damme a lot. Oh God, listen, I have, a, I had a in my old bedroom, I had a Jean Claude Van Damme post uh, <laughs> framed picture with um. Oh, you're talking about anyone over like who I fantasized about? I thought you were talking about who I jerked off to porn, like no, the, listen, no, anyone. Oh my gosh, listen, um, 
That's why I was so confused when you took him forever to answer. I was like, For me, no, I thought you were talking about like what porn people. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't have a favorite porn person, but um, no, no for me it was def, for me it was definitely like Serena Williams and The Rock. I those two were like, uh, <laughs> yeah, those, the, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I just what, liked um, what I, era, <laughs> what era of The Rock? Um, I, I've always been obsessed with The Rock, even when he was like the the. He had the hair and he was um, yeah. the, the cocky wrestler. <laughs> and then as it goes on, like every, almost, I, 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 almost every piece of clothing I own is like uh, The Rock's Under Armour clothing. I just have to, every time he comes out with stuff, I'm like, fuck, I have to get it all. I love The Rock. He is, um, and he, the, the further, the more The Rock, uh, the older he gets, the greater he becomes. He's such a great role model. He's someone I like look up to and want to be like. And, um yeah so so in every way the rock and also in every way serena she's awesome um yeah good i'm so i was going to be so disappointed if your answer was just i don't know shower sex <laughs> no the rock and serena they 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 they, they take the crown okay um and then very last question uh because i love tv i assume that everyone loves tv assuming that what have you been watching during the pandemic um, I watch ESPN pretty much all day. And then uh, what what I actually watch a lot of is uh, is UFC. I'm obsessed with the UFC. Um, absolutely obsessed with the UFC. Um, I just like to watch gladiators, modern day gladiators fight. And uh, that's that's what they are. So and then Connor has been just making making the UFC such a huge, huge thing, which is awesome. And um I'm a Connor fan. Let me actually grab this package that just came in and show you. Where's that package? This actually just came in while I was here. Let's show you how much I love Connor. Uh, Roots of Fight is like a clothing brand I'm obsessed with. They do like all the Muhammad Ali, Bruce Lee clothing that I have a bunch of, Mike Tyson. But I just got this Connor shirt from them. Nice. But I so, thought that yeah. we just discussed you not buying clothes as much during the pandemic. Oh, not as much. That doesn't mean I'm not buying clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We all need a hobby. Yeah. Yours is buying clothes that you will not wear. Yeah, pretty much. They just sit there in my closet. <laughs> um, that's it. This was so much fun. You were the perfect first yes. guest. Yes. Thank you, brother. Uh, so, uh, if people want to follow you on social media, they can follow you on Twitter and Instagram at, uh, my Instagram is at, I am the last OG. My, uh, Twitter is at Ricky Larkin. Um, the I in the Larkin is a one at Ricky Lark one. And, um, and then only fans at only fans.com slash Ricky Larkin. And, um, yeah, easy. It's fun to follow. <laughs> yes, it is. I can attest. Um, <laughs> All right, Ricky, thank you so much. This was so all much right. fun. Thank you. And yeah. thank you all guys. Thank you guys for watching and tune in for the next episode. Yep. Have a good one, brother.